TGC Requiem here. We're back with round two of Legacy Cube. So we won 2-0 in the first match against a Esper Control sort of deck. We're going to be on the draw. Of course, the problem that you run into with these events are what you guys didn't have there was there's like a, a wait. So the first match went pretty fast, and so we had a good 15 plus minute wait. Uh, t man, it might have might have even been almost 20 minutes that uh, we had to wait there, and so because of that wait with the other matches going on. Um, people tend to walk away from their computers because who wants to sit there and watch a clock countdown? Uh, I just happened to watch one of my other buddies who does a lot of draft content, MTG Jack. Um, I watched him <laughs> draft Champions of Kamigawa, um, which is just really, really random. But anyway, uh... I like I like this. This is good enough to keep. So let's us roll raise the alarm or negate at instant speed and then we can jam spear or brim as based on what we've seen. Third turn. So yeah, I think we're good with this. Got a blue white mirror. I went to aggro. They went control, I can only presume. So we may want to avoid a monastery mentor. So I like what we got here because this allows us to put on pressure and next turn really threaten to destroy his mentor, which is a phenomenal card here. So I don't really like attacking into that board state. There's too many one, one mana spells that he could have. So potentially access to red, so maybe we're facing more of a Jeskai build, which just offers a lot more 
shenanigans. I think we definitely go in with... Man, do we go in with Brimaz here? I think we do because... Yeah, and we could careful study into a land to make sure that we're going to hit our Sun Titan. Which could just bring Brimaz back, right? Target spell creature with Thunder's hand, two damage. Sure. Just gonna get a couple mentor tokens, but we are gonna just negate this. So we're definitely, <laughs> so we return two, right? Or return target, and then you can do one at attack steps. So, yeah, we'll end up attacking in with Brimaz. Ugh. I can only presume that's taking Brimaz, yep. Okay, so we can actually put the sower down below. Can we then attack? What do we want to do here? So our Brumaz is still gonna be summoning sick then, unfortunately. No creatures in the graveyard. So I think we just pass here and then we hope to unexpectedly absent the Sower of Temptation on attacks, getting our Brimas back to block. Well, unfortunately that's a thing, but better that than the Sun Titan. This double mentor is killing me. And it's funny because as I think about this, this one's an illusion. 
could just be gone. Uh, batter skull is pretty good. How many counters does he have? <laughs> I'm really getting that on Brimaz would be pretty nasty. He's got a lot of counters. We are going to lose this game, I'm pretty sure. And he does have to waste his entire turn now to pay for that. So I think we're definitely going to be looking at Supreme Verdict and... Definitely be looking at Supreme Verdict, Terminus for the post board games. So the flip side of what I could do here is if a block they both would die together which would get me two one ones with flying and then assuming I hit a land but I don't think I'm I've really got a better option here So I think this will give me two flyers. I could have blocked the token too. And then we just really hope that we can, yeah, jam some Titan. He only has one spell, so we're looking at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, twelve, thirteen. He could do a lot. I mean, two damage with these two guys up to block, we should be able to hold off and not enough, and actually have lethal crack back if he gets too frisky.
trying to think what cards I have that could be good answers. I mean, really getting rid of the Monastery Mentors is, is the biggest thing. Um, I know I had unexpectedly absented the Sword of Temptation. Probably should have done this guy. I was forgetting that he's an illusion. Illusions just have to be targeted to be sac to be forced to be sacrificed. That would have bought us at least a token or two. Fewer deal. Plus, we wouldn't have him to deal with. And all that to try and get the Brimaz back, which really just got out of control. Not sure what's going on with our opponent here. Probably had to run to the restroom or something. Do like that. This next turn we probably are not doing anything with careful study. We're probably just holding up Spear of Heliod. So we're, we're thinking here we're just going to attack with both these spirits over the top, get them down to 11, and then hold up mana to destroy target creature. Granted, we could draw something that changes things. Oh, can't destroy target creature this turn. While we were in the tank there, forgot the fact that this is was our turn. Our opponent's turn is next. We're tapped out already. I feel like at some point he's going to have to feel like he needs to do something aggressive. But I think he's probably going to try and hold up resources. So we're just going to hold the island here. Oh, Sword of Temptation, Bramaz. So we can attack with Vigilance. With one pump, he's really only going to allow us to get like three creatures with the Sun Titan. We could bring back Hollowed, whatchamacallit, but we're really not gaining any value out of that. So I think we just go um, attack with our Flyers again. We're willing to trade one off for the Sower. Alright, so he's going to go fact or fiction here. It's possible we want to use careful study. We sh possibly wanted to use it this past turn. Um, there's a chance here he doesn't really get anything useful. He's got to get enough volume. I'm really kicking myself for not blocking that cat soldier. Alright, so he's going to reveal the top five cards of his library, and then I'm going to separate those into two piles. And then he gets to pick which one he wants. Elish Norn, huh? What are you at mana wise? You are there. And that Elish Norn is bad news. 
He can't cast it this turn, though. This... Hmm. <laughs> so, we could just stick him with the Preordain or the Counterspell. Assuming he doesn't have a land, he can't cast any of these spells this turn, which gives us the ability to kind of put some pressure back on him, drawn to an answer. Um, Those are the piles. So he took the one with Counterspell, Preordain, and Elish Norn. Oh, and that was on his turn. Jeez, man, I'm I'm out of the I'm out of it. Alright, so he'll be able to play Elish Norn. Preordain and probably just kill me. So I definitely think the unexpectedly absent should have been targeted here. And then at that point, we actually would have been in position by now to really put some pressure on. Let's see how much damage he can do. He is actually taking a route where he's not playing Elishnor in this turn. So he has five more mana, he can preordain, presumably running his prowess up a bit more. He's gonna wait another turn. So, I mean, we really need an answer, so we're just gonna do the careful study thing. So actually, what does Gideon do for us? If we drop Gideon, that puts us at six. I mean, we put enough pressure that he's got to do something. It actually gets us out of range of Elish Norn killing us. So I think we actually go, we definitely need Condemn. Wall gets us, Wall and Jace. So I think we do Jace, then Wall. Throw this puppy down. Immediately down tick. Uh, he's got another counter. Alright, so I think we're just done at this point.
and um, Yeah. Well, note to self about that illusion shenanigans. So we could brainstorm. I assume you can brainstorm into a terminus, right? This board state's getting out of control. Yep, that's too much. So we will concede game as 27 damage across the other ones. Do, 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 do. Okay, so I feel like opposition is a losing battle with all of his counters to try and get that in. Um, verdict works well in place of that. Talran seems really good. Um, uh, Tefiri could actually be really good. We're not really worried about Batter Skull, I'd say. Entreat seems worse. Terminus seems better. Um, we could bring in the Watery Grave and Slaughter Pact, but that seems pretty risky. Um, Serendib actually seems good here. Glorious Anthem could be alright. I don't think we saw anything that makes us want Phyrexian Revoker. There was a Jace there at the end, but... Alright, so we lost the first game. 0-1. Definitely some issues on our side and how we played it. Um, I like this. So while he's tapped out, we can jam in our Brimaz. Definitely go for this here. Unlikely to resolve. Yeah, that's fine. Then we'll 
probably be looking at council judge, judgmenting, right? Sacrifice, can't control, less than or equal to, yep. So I'm just hoping he does. Because this is like permanent control magic. So the flip side is if we don't get it, we can hold up Supreme Verdict and wipe the board after the fact. So that's fine, we can banish or just priest that. But right now the legacy's allure is the bigger concern. that we even want a banisher priest fiend. We really are looking to set up a supreme verdict turn to get Brimaz back. I'm okay trading one point for one point. This also opens up windows for us to sit adjacent. So you can either have the counter spell or the walker and the remover. He doesn't removal. He doesn't have access to. So, <laughs> I kind of want to play Mentor right now. actually just taking the life there to have access to Brainstorm. Brutal Expulsion again. because we definitely needed to get access to a land. We're, we're really not playing so great here. Well, that's not all bad. Um, Not really how we wanted to be using the Supreme Verdict there. I'm actually wondering if Banisher Priest can even do anything to Alish Norn. So either the lands or the counter spell. Yeah, 
And thinking that I had given that to him, that kind of makes that play pretty bad. Try and get some card engine going. I think we've kind of put ourselves into too tough of a position here, though. Discards two cards. Discard two cards. I mean, we're really counting on Blade Hold at this point. So, four, five, six. So in response to this, we're going to brainstorm. This is why I should have taken Consecrated Sphinx. I think we definitely want to negate up next turn. So we're going to put the Tandra on top, the Gideon, hmm, I did that backwards, I wanted to have the uh, land on top. That way we could have negated here. Pact of negation, boom. Counterspell. We are just getting wrecked. His deck's way better than mine. And he pretty much knows how to play it. So I feel like this is a combo here. Consecrated Phoenix with that. We're just locked out. Um, so we'll be back for match three. Basically, um, yeah, so he's going to draw two cards every turn. Then he's going to discard two cards. He can kill us in four turns, so he's not going to mill through his entire um, deck that fast. Um, I suppose we could have jammed Gideon with a negate the next turn. To keep that alive. But he has more life than us. We're, we're done either way. Definitely made mistakes. So that first game, definitely the unexpectedly absent should have been focused on the, um, the illusion that cost me the game over the long haul. Um, I mean, you could really go back to that point, and we were at a point where we could start attacking with Brimaz and Sun Titan, and we couldn't. If we had killed that though we would have had that ability um, which is you know way way down the road in the future but short-sighted on my part there and then this game um, I think really just the supreme verdict we really needed to, to hold on to the supreme verdict till later there especially how everything had kind of laid out not sure that we would have gotten through this one but something we should have done we'll be back with the third match soon. Lost 0-2, 1-1 overall.